What is going on, guys? It is Legion Queen, and I am back from MLG Anaheim 2014, and you guys are watching some Battlefield Hardline gameplay. I ended up going 13 and 7, so spoiler alert early on. But I've been having fun with this game, which is why I've continued to play and upload its content. And just as a reminder, guys, the closed beta is still active, so if that's something you feel like you want to check out, be sure to click that link in the description. Today's video is going to kind of be a recap on my weekend at MLG. The last Battlefield video, I talked about my E3 experiences, so I figured I'd drop a couple stories for you guys regarding my trip at MLG. And I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. So let's jump straight into this like we would a swimming pool at 3.30 in the morning with a bunch of cinder blocks attached to our ankles. MLG was crazy. We had more fans, more viewers, and demographics and age range from like 9 to 65. I had this old guy come up and tell me he was a big fan of my videos and was like, yeah, I watch your videos in my garage when I'm just chilling. I was like, this dude's awesome. He used the word chilling and he's like 65. But uh, we had more fans, more viewers here than we had at PAX East. And I thought PAX East was mind-boggling. That was an incredibly fun event, but I had no idea. Actually, I think the rest of Daddy's Darlings had no idea that MLG was going to be this crazy for fans and viewers. I told them before we went, I was like, I think we're going to have a more solidified base of people showing up that'll know who we are. And they were like, no, dude. And then they ended up being like, wow, what a crazy, crazy experience and a crazy trip. But it was awesome. And I got to take so many photos and sign so many things for people that my hands cramped and my smile is permanent now. So if you see me in public, I might look like a jackal. And that's not my fault. One of my favorite reasons for going to these types of events, whether it's an EA hosted event, MLG event, PAX, E3, is that everybody is going to this event for basically like one of one of two purposes, either to have fun, rekindle friendships with friends you've made online or at these events, and or compete your balls off, right? And something that always happens when I'm going to an MLG event especially is I always meet somebody on the flight or on my layover that is going to MLG for the same purpose. You can tell. They're either wearing their favorite team jersey or hat or they've got their own jersey, or they're wearing Astros around their neck, which is pretty much a sure sign that they're a gamer and probably going to MLG, especially if they're on the same flight as you, going to Final Destination where the event's being held, just saying. But on this flight from Dallas to Anaheim, which was my layover, J-Cap was on my flight, so shout out to you. You didn't know who I was. That's okay. You're gigantic, so I recognized you immediately. And then we had a smasher on my plane who we sat next to who was giving us all this interesting insight on the community. And I want to give a shout out to the Smash community because if you're unfamiliar with how dedicated they are as both fans and players, you should really peek in on their live streams whenever they're having them because that game is crazy. It's like a decade old, and they still go nuts, and they are almost as loud as everyone else in the venue with like a quarter of the size of people watching. So shout out to you guys for being awesome. With three or four games being played on the pro circuit, do you guys think that games like Battlefield Hardline could be used on a competitive platform? This is a question that I've wanted to know about Battlefield for a while now. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys as the viewers to leave an answer to that comment in the comments. Otherwise, let's get into these stories because I am ready to tell you some funny instances that have happened so far this event. All right, guys. Story number one comes from my layover in Dallas, Texas on my way to Anaheim for MLG. I went to use the bathroom, and let me just let you guys know that the bathroom I used at the Dallas airport was by far the cleanest public restroom I have ever used in my life. I have no idea why. I walked in. I was like I was in a golden era of toilets, and I'm sitting there using the restroom, and someone comes in and rattles the door, okay? This is a busy airport. There are people coming in and out. Obviously, if the door's locked, it's probably not essential for you to keep rattling the door and or do the next portion of my story which is look through the hole while I'm sitting in there using the bathroom and look at me as if I'm some sort of mannequin um I'm using the bathroom man why do we need to make eye contact I don't want to look at you looking at me potentially looking at my private parts this is terrifying um but yeah he left I finished up quickly, and I left because I didn't know if I was going to wake up somewhere random and terrified. So that's story number one, and this is just the beginning of the trip. The next story comes from Jehovah and I's hotel room, and this sounded shady upon saying Jehovah and I's hotel room. I promise you we only cuddle on Tuesday nights, which we were not there on a Tuesday, so that would have been impossible, but it 
involves spiders. And I just want to let you guys know right now that my least favorite thing on the planet are spiders. I'm terrified of them. I can kill them. It's not that I'm afraid to kill them or anything like that. It's just they scare me initially really badly, and then I get angry, and I Hulk smash all of them with my bare hands. Just kidding. I get a can of aerosol and a shoe, and I drown those bitches, and then I beat them to death. So let's go into detail here of what happened. We're getting ready to go. I'm like, you know, Jehovah, I don't really want to put – I don't want to bring my own bag. I don't want to put my controllers in my backpack. I just – I want to put him in yours, man. Yours is lightweight. You're not really carrying anything. He was like, okay, man. Well, he opens up the backpack, and a brown recluse jumps out of this thing and slides across the bed, like some risky business sliding across the bed in socks. And I'm like, whoa, like spider. And we kill it, right? And then I go to put my controllers in because I'm like, eh, just a spider in his back. And another one pops out the same size, which is about the size of, I don't know, a 50-cent piece, which I'm not cool with that. I'm not cool with putting my hands in where there could be like a roulette of spiders. I don't want to put them in where they're bobbing for hands while I'm trying to just put my controllers in things. So, uh, spider comes out, I'm like, you know, man, that's cool, that's cool, I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that, I'll just bring my own bag, I'm really not about this whole lifestyle of spiders and getting bitten and waking up paralyzed and stuff like that, so, I put them in my bag, well, later on that night, we get back to the hotel room, it's probably 3, 3.30 in the morning, I do, at least Jehovah's already been asleep, I get my bag, I put it on the bed, and lo and behold, I pull my controller out, and another spider pops out that's about the same size, and I'm thinking to myself, What in the hell is going on, and why are there so many spiders in this hotel room in Anaheim? Pretty sure that there was like a nest or something in our room, because I woke up the next morning and had rolled over and killed one in my sheets. So in the segment of 24 hours, in the time frame of 24 hours, I had killed four spiders all the size of 50 cent pieces. Now you may be thinking to yourself right now, Laquan, you are a wimp, and I'm thinking right now, as a response to your comment, yes, I am. I don't want them. I don't like being bitten unless she's pretty enough. But anyways, let's jump into the third story, which involves my flights back as well as a delicious breakfast I had. So we flew out of Long Beach Airport, guys, and we flew into Santa Monica. So it was weird that we're flying out of a separate airport. This airport's super tiny and uh, lots of blonde women with sunglasses in this airport. We get there, of course, I don't know if it's the beard or the fact that I'm fat or if it's the fact that I had dirty toenails because I wore new black socks the night before and forgot to clean them out, aka wash them before they came, but I get patted down per usual, no big deal, but we had decided, Jehovah and I had decided that we were going to get some breakfast because who doesn't love overpriced airport breakfasts that cost more than they're actually worth and don't taste good? Well, my mind was blown here at Long Beach Airport, and if you're there, you need to try McKenna's. McKenna's pancakes were the best pancakes I've ever had. And you don't go in to an airport breakfast place assuming you're going to get really good service, essentially. Maybe it's just my experiences. I usually don't have good service. Our waiter, our waitress, pardon me, was awesome. The pancakes were the best ever. They had like an oatmeal topping on them with hot syrup. So delicious. It was like $10. I mean, we left her like a $10 tip because it just felt right to even it out like it would be at any other breakfast place. But we get on our flight. And we're on the smallest plane on the planet. I feel like they're going to shoot me to outer space in a time capsule because this is the small plane. I walk on. I hit both my shoulders on the uh, first class exit into the main cabin. So that was super fantastic. Jehovah, of course, is not sitting with me. I'm sitting down, and I've got this uh, older lady that's on my plane, and I am dead tired. I slept maybe three and a half hours the night before we get on this flight. It's like 10 a.m. I wake up when we're getting ready to land for our layover in Phoenix, And this lady straight up um, is looking at me directly in the eyes when I wake up. We're both, I don't know if she fell asleep and I fell asleep and woke up at the same time, but I wake up leaning towards her side and I'm staring at this lady and I jump. I'm scared. I don't know if she wants to suck my soul out because she's secretly a demon witch and or a dragon slayer. I don't know what's going on, but she was nice enough. Just don't stare at other people while they're sleeping because it's terrifying unless you're their boyfriend or girlfriend, significant other, partner. Whatever, just not random strangers. Don't stare in a random stranger's eyes. So that's that. And we get to Phoenix, and we get on, and there is this girl that's on this flight with us that is literally the definition of Butterface, except I wouldn't even really call her Butterface. She had like a mustache, but I don't think anybody noticed it, but I noticed female mustache as like a champion, so because I have a beard, so obviously I'm always envious of female mustaches to see if there are any competition to my own, but she gets on, and she is loud and rambunctious and moving when the flight attendant is telling her not to, and she gets up, and she gets her bag out from the very back when she's sitting at the front of the plane, and she's just being extremely obnoxious. Well, we land in Kansas City, and I don't know if you guys know airplane etiquette, but it's very simple, and it goes like this. 
if you're in the front and your bag is in the back, you wait until everyone in front of you and between you and your bag are gone before you go get yours. This girl darts out of the middle seat while the plane is still landing, okay, while it's landing, and sprints to get her bag, and I have never seen a flight attendant move so quickly in my entire life, but she sprints, and she's like, no, get in your seat, you can't do this, we're not doing this, you sit down, you gotta wait until the flight's completely stopped and I give the okay and the go, and I'm sitting back there, and what do I do? I sit, and I'm like, I clap for this lady, because she put this girl in her place, and I get off the airplane, and this girl has the balls, not literally, but she has the goal to talk to the people that are running the gate about bad service whenever she straight up karate chopped her way to get back to her bag before the flight had even landed. So that was her fault. But guys, I went over on story time. I'm sorry about the pause screen at the ending, but I had to continue telling stories because that's what I do. Basically, MLG Anaheim was an extremely fun experience. It was quite delightful. And Battlefield Hardline is a lot of fun. I know I kind of went off topic this game, this round, this video, but I felt it necessary to explain to you guys my circumstances. Like I said, close beta, still going on, so check it out in the description, and uh, shoot RPGs and AK-47s, and uh, drive muscle cars all day, because that's a thing now. Thanks for watching, and have an excellent day.